I think we're going to have good <laughs> food control and <laughs> what? Have potential to have a good beat. You see, he sent me, we were talking. Oh, I know. He sent those pictures to me. I went in his office and I looked at him I, and we looked at him together. I go, these are going to be fine. Yeah, we were. And, and, I go, and, and, and Jim goes, well, what's Clay thing? I go, he thinks he's going to have to replant it. <laughs> he goes, what'd you tell him? I go, I told him don't look at it for seven days. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and and then, we'll, then we'll see what they look like. Beck's Practical Farm Research is here to help you turn your products and practices into profit. You've got questions, we've got answers. This is Ask PFR. Uh, what happened to the temperature? Huh? Holy cow, man. When was this? Were they calling for this kind of temperature? Yeah. Greg, how are you, sir? High 65 today. Oh, I know, we'll get <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> it's chilly. Oh. It's cold. It wouldn't be. Um, so one of the questions we're getting on Ask PFR is: Okay, we've had a lot of rain, and not everybody. They want to know: Okay, what should I be looking for as it relates to my residuals? Is there a way for me to know if I still have residuals? Should I be making plans? So we're getting that on on Ask PFR. What are, what are some of your thoughts? Well, they're good questions. So let's start on the positive side of things. I guess you know we had some warmer weather, and we we usually talk about persistence as it relates to carryover. We're not probably going to have much chance for carryover. We had some warmer temperatures yeah, through winter awesome. and microbial activities. As we look at the persistence now for these herbicides, we want to work and continue working. It has a lot to do with the, the, the type of the herbicide we have, you yeah. know, the, the family of chemistry that we're dealing with. Yeah. It has to do with the soil characteristics that we place that, that herbicide on. Obviously, what we've been talking about is the environment. Yep. You know, as it relates to like PPO herbicides and probably microbial, is I think, uh, you know, we don't usually see a real long term residual that we get. We get a satisfactory one, but not yep. extensive, you know, as far as weeks and weeks. No question, we ought to be out scouting for these things because I think the, the ability for them to continue to be effective uh, in controlling weeds is probably going to be shortened up quite a bit with the, the weather we've had. And as far as looking at these next post-emerge herbicide applications, it's just looking at, you know, looking at the height and, and as far as the weed, weed control and maybe, you know, not judging it by the crop height, but just make sure that we're out there looking at those, the weed height. We've had more rain and water, but we, we also, we don't have a whole lot of chemistry down. Um, we've had, because of all the rain and then followed by wind, um, a lot of guys in our area, including our PFR guys back in the air, are having trouble finding those windows to even get anything put down the first time. So our, you know, things that we're going to be looking out for is, you know, are we going to be looking at using more residual uh, post-emerge than what we sure. probably typically do? So that's something we're going to be looking out for. Well, one of the other questions we got, and ask PFR is, what do I do? I've got thin stands. I got, you know, 80, 90,000. What are you going to do with 90,000? We're going to leave them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they look pretty good out there, don't yeah. they? Is that ideal? Uh, our data says uh, about 100, 125 on beans is, you know, your best. Seeding rate? Yeah. yeah. But your yeah. best net return. And I'd say we're going to roll the dice. I, don't, I think they're going to be just fine. I'm not too concerned. They look good. I could roll them across the farm and... What's history taught you, Craig, when you look at a 90,000? It's a little bit subjective, you know, and, and when we were out here the other day, we didn't have quite all of them up yet. You know, they were still struggling, some of them at the time, and uh, we'd certainly like to see an 80,000. It would be nice. Yeah. Uh, if we have narrow rows and they're uniform, we might be able to get down to 70, 75. What do you tell a guy about when he says, I've got 65 or 70,000, I want to I want to drag my planter through and thicken it up? Um, you know, it depends on how far away they have been from the original planting date and yep. what stage we're in. But it's, I'd, I'd say that there's never a tougher thing to do than try to work with a farmer and a customer to do replanting of either be corn or beans. Yep. Um, but every situation is somewhat different. But I kind of always like to think of uh, that we're going to destroy about half of what we have out there, or yep. roughly the start at that point. Yep. And in soybeans, we can sort of tolerate a higher population if that be the case. Take these guys out there with you and... Um See, just show them. I mean, show them and talk through what you saw a couple weeks ago. They can, you've got pictures and stuff, and then talk about the stand and what you see now. And I, I think that'd be good for them to have on this video. So, I say we need to get out there before this rain. There's another wave. Is there another one coming? Yeah. Another yeah. band coming. Mm -hmm. I want to see these 100 bushel soybeans you got out there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs>
Craig, when you were out here last week, what, and, and then as you compare it to what you're looking at now, how's your thought process change or anything or what? Well, you know, it's been a few days. At the time, the majority, we had cotyledons out of the, out of the soil, you know, it had merged, but probably over 50% of them were still just at the necking stage and just kind of just exposing the hypocotyl. And that's where we saw a lot of that injury. So today to see the, the stand, the way it looks, yep. is really kind of amazing. <laughs> Uh, based on what we did see the other day. It doesn't, look, it doesn't even look like the same area as the pictures no, that you guys no, are showing. Not us. at all. So we did have a lot of recovery. The plants, temperature I think was the main thing that came through. Yep. You know, we started to get that temperature back up and the, the soybeans really started, re, really responded to it. So even though you had injury, even though you saw that, it's not going to really influence your decisions next year as far as your herbicide program. Or I don't think like so. That. No, yeah. I sure wouldn't recommend it. No. Yeah. I like, like yeah. to control. I don't, yep. I, I, I'd rather if we're gonna lose a little bit of beans, I take a loss over water hemp. Yep. Mm -hmm. really well, that would. gets back to your PFR data, mm -hmm. where we were showing. It you is. know, if you got to trade off weed pressure and stand, you trade off stand for weed pressure. Right. You know, so yeah. I, just not all your stand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What were your stand counts out here, Daniel? Last so time? the average of this entire block was ninety-one thousand. I think there's about ten thousand different flux around there, so cool. it wasn't bad. Nope. I'm kind of with uh, with Jason's assessment. I think we probably got potential here of what, 100 bushels? <laughs> you never know. Any? <laughs> but you know, seriously, you were ready to tear it up. Ready to tear it up. And that's a hard thing to do in a situation like that. So you were saying, what'd you say, 25, 30,000 were looking That's like kind of what I felt like we, we were seeing, you know, look damaged. But I think that even if that, that amount, we certainly recovered and had some of those survive and, and are, yep. are certainly going to be very viable and, and strong plants today. True testament how resilient soybeans really are. Yep. Yep. Right yep. Here, that's for sure. Cool. That's for sure. Well, thanks for joining us on this edition of Ask PFR. Don't forget to like and subscribe or comment below using the hashtag AskPFR. This is Jim Schwartz with the Illinois crew. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everybody.